Hi all, welcome to another Dave Downey Fly Tying Video Production. Here I'll be sharing my favourite flies and patterns, methods of tying them to help make catching these fish better for you guys around the world. So, all the flies that I tie I personally use, they're there to catch fish, know the angler, and at the end of each of the video there'll be a wee list of materials required to tie the flies just in case you missed it. And I'll link to my online shop where you can purchase the flies and the materials required to tie these patterns. I hope you all enjoy the video and you pass the information, let your mates know about it. Uh, today I've been asked to tie some cormorants, so I'm going to do a cormorant. It's a quite a simple cormorant. It's one of the original cormorants. Uh, it was given to me a long, long time ago by a very quite famous angler called Graham Pearson, who fishes Rutland. Graham uh, gave me three cormorants a long, long time ago, and it was from the guy who basically invented the cormorant. So, to tie the cormorant, what you're going to need is you're going to need that's a 175 size 12 in a vise, right? Uh, barbed, obviously, you can use a, a barbless hook as well. You're going to need some thread, up to you what colour of thread you use, but what you need to remember is depending on the colour of thread. Depends the way the body looks. So I'm using, as always, Shear 14 and that's in black. And then we're going to need some Venriards Pearl Lurex. That's the fine stuff. And the last thing we're going to need is a Marabou, black Marabou. But this is the tip of the Marabou. See, I've cut it. So what I do is when I'm tying my flies, I'll tie my lures and stuff with the, the, the normal bits of marabou, then all the tips go into a box and that box is for basically cormorants because cormorants should be tied with just the tips of the marabou so I'm going to tie this in okay. I'm going to run the thread down and it, it's very much like a buzzer cormorant is up to you what size you make the body to be quite honest so I've put that in now what we need to do is get some uh, Pearl Lurex. Obviously, we're using the Vernier stuff, so I'm just going to get a bit of that off, off the spool. If we can get it off, okay. Take it off the spool. So I've taken a length of the Pearl Lurex off. I'm going to fold it a couple of times because this is a body and the tail. Right, so so I folded it about five, uh, four times. Sorry, so I'm going to catch that in loosely and just go forward. As I say, Graham Pearson gave me three cormorant patterns. These were the original ones, and he's seen a boy on Grafham Water absolutely smashing fish on these. And seen, like, I don't know the name of the boy, but he was the guy. It was a England youth boy. He was the boy that basically invented these cormorants. So all I've done is, instead of using you know fancy materials or anything, I just used the pearl, stuck it in there, and it's meant to look like that. So what we want to do is get get the you know uh, the medium lurex now. So that was a fine, which is good for the tail and stuff. But we want the medium now, so we're going to catch a medium in because that's going to be the body. I'm going to go forward. And the thing with cormorants, I, I find you want them as skinny as possible, to be quite honest. So, I'm just going to put a bit of varnish on the, the, the thread there, because I want I want the pearl to stick. Okay, so I'm just going to go forward with the pearl now. Right, and you can see it's quite a dark green. That's because it's black thread I'm using underneath it. If you were to change the colour of the thread, it's going to change the colour of the pearl. So I'll tie that in, then we'll just cut it away. Now at this point, obviously, I'm going to do a bit of finish. Right? Just make sure there's no excess varnish. Now, the other thing you can do is you can use jungle cock with these as well. But the original ones didn't have jungle cock, because in those days it wasn't that cheap. So you see how I've pulled that all together? And I've got it just the same length as the tail and catch it in. That's it. Spiky cormorant. 
one of the original ones. Now I did tell you there was three, so there was a trilogy of them. So this one was tied for Top Dropper. The other one was just bronze peacock for the body. Not even got a rib on it or anything. So it was just bronze peacock, no tail, just bronze peacock. And the last one was green fluorescent wool. Now the wool that was tied and used was the Steve Parton stuff. Now if you've got a packet of that line about that's what you can use, but that actually had a tail and the body was tied with that. And I remember fishing on Loch Fad years ago when I used to work for a company called Compaq and I fished in a competition, I fished in their club competitions and we went to Loch Fad as we were last out and one of the guys in the club, he is one of my subscribers, he's a nice guy, Jim, uh, I won't mention his second name, but you know, I had already won the championship, so I didn't even need to go to Lockfad, but me being a competition angler, I don't like leaving any stones unturned. I like to make sure that I win everything. You know, if you're going to compete, you've got to... If you're going to compete in a competition, you should never be happy with second place. Right? If you're going to compete in a competition, you're always there to win. No point in entering if you're not going to go out to try and win. So as I say, I had already won it, but I, you know, the last out and I didn't have to go. I went anyway, long story short, it's a 10 fish limit, uh, I asked the guy at the front, uh, the, 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 the hut, he says, uh, what if I get my 10 fish, what, what, what after that, and he says, well just get a hold of the one of us and we'll let you go back out and fish for another ticket, so it was agreed that I would get another ticket for another 7 fish, well I had 17 fish that day, and they were all on these comments. Uh, just fishing three of them on a, a, a glass line and funny enough if you remember a long time ago the glass line that a trout fisherman gave you free it was one of the first ever clear intermediates that airflow produced I'm still using that line to this day and it must be 30 years old nearly so you know sometimes old isn't bad so I really hope you enjoyed that as I says just remember the other one's a green wool body with a green wool tail and the last one is just with a bronze mark, a bronze uh, peacock herald. And it, it, that the one he tied wasn't even trimmed, it was just quite bushy. So that was his cast of three comments. So I'm going to tie some other comments later on in the videos but I hope you really enjoyed that one. Really really simple, dead fast to tie. Uh, and Follow me on my YouTube channel. You can subscribe to it, you can follow me on my Facebook channel, that's David C. Downey, you can follow me on my Instagram, Dave Downey Fly Fishing, or you can go on to my guiding site which is www.davedowneyfishing.com and my website is www.fly-fishingworld.com where you can get the materials and the patterns. So I really hope you enjoyed it, as I say it's a really simple fly, bread and butter, no nonsense, go catch. Go get them tied and have fun. Tight lines guys. Bye.